The Return Merchandise Authorization Module, or RMA for short, is essential for any company that needs to track and resolve customer returns. We'll start in RMA Data Entry, where the normal processing of returns begins. RMA Data Entry is much like Sales Order Entry, with Header, Address, and Lines tabs, so if you're familiar with that program, learning this one is a snap. Let's run through the process of entering a return when the customer knows the invoice number and the item number that they want to return. First, we click on the Next RMA button to get the next available RMA number and select the customer. Note that the defaults we chose in Setup Options fill in to Streamline Data Entry. The Ship To field is used by the system to automatically create documents if we need to ship product back to this customer. And, if we want to have the warehouse personnel inspect the product when it is returned, we check the Inspect on Receipt box. The Address tab shows the details for the Ship To field on the Header tab to verify the mailing address for the RMA and to change the Ship To address for a replacement item. The information here will print on credit memos, orders, and subsequent invoices when they are generated for this item. On the Lines tab, we select the invoice number from the lookup list. Note that all of the items on the invoice appear in the lookup box. The customer tells me that one of the Han 2 drawer letter files is defective and is unusable, so they want to return it. I ask the customer what action they want taken. Do they want to return it for credit, return it for replacement, or return it for repair? They need this item, so they ask me to send a replacement. The next field here is the item action, which determines what we will do with the item after it is returned. The final decision on the item's disposition may need to wait until the product comes in, but I'm going to mark it scrap for now because the customer said it was in pretty bad shape. And I'm going to mark the vendor action as replacement too, so the system will automatically order this from our vendor. The customer now tells me they urgently need this item and want to know if we can ship it to them without waiting to get the return. So I check the cross ship box for this item to start the process of having the replacement cross in the mail with the returned item. The item defaults in with a quantity of 4 since that was on the original order. I change the quantity to 1 since only one item was damaged and is being returned. Then I click on the item zoom button to see current availability. I see I have plenty available in Warehouse 1, so we'll process a cross-shipment for this item by clicking on the cross-ship checkbox. Since this is the only item the customer wishes to return, I click on the Express Sales Order button to instantly create the replacement order. The system verifies that I want to save this RMA before moving to Sales Order Entry. As you can see when we enter the new order, all of the customer information defaults in from the RMA entry screen. And if we move over to the Lines tab, the item the customer requested appears automatically. I accept the order and I'm right back in RMA data entry ready to process another return. If I close RMA data entry and move back to the main RMA menu, you can see the next steps in return processing. I can print the RMA and mail or fax it to the customer with special instructions on where and how to send the items. I can then print a receiver document to send to my receiving dock so warehouse personnel know an item is on its way. Once the goods have been received, they are inspected, entered in RMA receipts entry, and the item action and vendor action are finally determined. Lastly, I select Generate Transactions. This program creates sales orders and credit memos in the Sales Order module based on the customer actions entered in RMA Data Entry and RMA Receipts Entry. It also creates purchase orders and purchase order returns if you have selected vendor actions that require them. You can even consolidate purchase orders by vendor number and summarize multiple orders for the same item if you wish. I'll click on the Proceed button to generate the transactions and print the generation listing to see the transactions that are automatically created. As you can see, the MASS90 and MASS200 Return Merchandise Authorization is a powerful tool that streamlines return processing, helping your company maintain a competitive advantage by providing exceptional customer service.